Hi, and welcome to Measuring Toxicity. When measuring toxicity, lethal dosage is what we will usually refer to. Uh, lethal dosage refers to the amount of a substance that will kill a specific percentage of the population, usually within four hours of ingestion. Uh, so, for instance, if the LD is 50, so if it's LD50, uh, it means that 50% of the population will die within four, uh, four hours. So if you have 10 mice, five of them will die at the end or by the end of four hours. Uh, if the LD is 20, then 20% 20 of the population will die after four hours. So if you have 10 uh, mice or 10 rats, then two of them will die by the end of four hours. Uh, what this means is that the higher the LD, the more lethal it is. Lethal dosage itself uh, is recorded in milligrams per kilogram of body weight. Uh, typically, we will estimate how much will kill a human based on uh, lab rats or the results of how much killed uh, a population of rats. Uh, this can be very difficult because uh, resistance to different uh, poisons can vary uh, among, can be very different among species. So it can vary between humans and rats. The toxicity classes and definitions, uh, if it has a extreme toxicity, that means a taste to a drop could kill a 150 pound adult human. Uh, if it's relatively harmless, that means that it's more than a quart that will kill a 150 pound adult human. Uh, what this means is the smaller the amount, the more toxic the substance is, and the larger the amount uh, of the poison that it takes to kill a person or a group of rats, uh, the less toxic the substance is. Uh, this table involves some lethal dose values. So uh, some materials or some poisons uh, may be very poisonous, some, it may take a lot to kill a person. So really what it means is that the poison is in the dosage. Uh, these are some common things that uh, humans will come in contact with, uh, with the exception of the uh, top five most poisonous on this chart. Uh, everything else is naturally occurring or something that we may come in contact with. Um, sucrose or sugar. Uh, can actually kill a person in very large amounts. Uh, same thing with water. Humans overdose from water periodically, uh, but they actually have to drink a very, very, very large amount of water in order to overdose on it. The top three, so these three right here are the most poisonous uh, products out there the most poisonous uh, materials on earth. Uh, all three of them are naturally occurring products. Uh, that means that they are not man-made. They are naturally found on the earth. Uh, some of them are bacteria, some of them are funguses, but they are naturally occurring. Botulin toxin right here is the deadliest form of poison. Uh, it is something that we use in medicine. Uh, I mentioned it in the other slideshow or the other set of notes. Uh, it is what Botox is made from. It's made from this guy right here. Uh, we use a very diluted amount, like very diluted, uh, because it doesn't take much of this toxin to kill a person. So we use way, way, way less than what is used to kill a person. Uh, we use it to paralyze the muscles of the skull and face, um, so it decreases migraines and also wrinkles. Now this chart uh, is uh, symptoms of various types of poisonings. Um, this chart uh, refers to some of the most common poisonings or poisoning materials that are used. Um, some of them you won't see as often anymore, but they are, have all been used to poison people. Um, and the characteristics are, they vary. So uh, caustic poisons are very acidic uh, or very basic, and they cause 
uh, burns around the lips and the mouth of the victim. Carbon monoxide is one that you can see very easily uh, because the body will actually turn bright, bright red. So like cherry red. Uh, it's very bright. Uh, normally lividity is purplish in color or a maroon, uh, but in this case it will be bright red. Uh, and then we enter into uh, what I like to call the rainbow of vomit. Uh, the rainbow of vomit, uh, it's all sorts of colors of vomit that you will start puking if you ingest these poisons. Um, from black to yellow. Um, so, that is your rainbow of vomit. Uh, the uh, odors that show up, uh, phosphorus has an onion or a garlic odor. Uh, cyanide has a burnt almond odor, so the body will actually emit this odor after death. Uh, arsenic and mercury are extreme diarrhea. And I would like to uh, point out that anytime they put the word extreme uh, on the beginning of something as a symptom, that means that it is the worst possible case scenario. Uh, in this case with extreme diarrhea, it means that you've had the thought that you have to go to the bathroom and that you need to get to the bathroom. And by the time you've had that thought cross your brain, you've already gone to the bathroom in your pants. Uh, that is extreme, okay? It means that there are, you're not leaving the bathroom for days. Um, uh, methyl and isopropyl alcohol you don't see as often. Uh, we saw a increase of people using this during prohibition uh, because during prohibition they banned ethyl alcohol. So people were trying to find other ways to uh, quote-unquote get drunk. So they would use uh, wood alcohol or rubbing alcohol and drink that instead, thinking, hey, it's alcohol, it'll get me drunk, uh, when in actuality it's just going to cause you to uh, go unconscious, uh, possibly die. Uh, if people survived, uh, oftentimes they ended up being blind. Lead poisoning is something that has uh, entered our... Uh, our vision uh, in the past few years with all of the uh, issues that were going on in Flint, Michigan. Uh, lead itself is not a highly poisonous uh, metal, but chronic exposure can have major health problems. So being exposed to it for years uh, can lead to subtle brain damage uh, that will affect your memory and thought processes. Uh, it also causes people to have lower IQs uh, because of it affecting your memory and thought processes. Uh, the common methods of exposure. Uh, Lead-based paints was one of the most common uh, points of exposure, uh, but it was banned in 1978 because they noticed the correlation between uh, lead and brain damage. So uh, the reason why lead-based paints uh, were being ingested was because it tasted sweet. It had a very sweet taste to it. So a lot of times toddlers would put their mouth on the windowsill uh, and they would use it to like teeth or they'd rub their gums on it uh, and they would ingest the lead by doing that. Uh, leaded gasoline uh, was used for years uh, but they banned it in 1995. Uh, leaded gasoline is why we have it in our soils, especially soil around uh, highways and roads uh, will have some lead in it. Uh, lead pipes, uh, this is what was going on in Flint, Michigan, is they had lead pipes uh, as their water pipes. And so if the water was acidic, which it is in the case of Flint, Michigan, uh, it'll actually break down the pipe or break down the lead as it's moving through the pipe and the lead will enter the water, which then the human or the person will ingest. Um, you also have it in some fine like lead crystals or in ceramics it's used. Uh, people still use these to eat and drink out of. However, you wanna make sure that you don't have anything that is very, very hot in it because the heat will break down the uh, lead and allow it to enter your food or your drink. Now the uh, government issued some public agencies uh, to help protect the uh, 
citizens of our nation. Uh, the Food and Drug Administration uh, regulates pharmaceuticals, anything they put into our food, uh, and also medical devices, so implants and stuff like that. Uh, they will do recalls if there's something going on. Uh, so in the news, they'll say, okay, uh, we are recalling this drug off of shelves, so like Tylenol or ibuprofen, because something happened. Uh, you'll see it sometimes with um, food as well, um, but they will recall it because something broke down in the factory and it now has shards of metal in it or it's, you know, contaminated with something else and they'll actually recall it and take it off of the shelves because it's causing injury to, to the citizens. Uh, the Environmental Protection Agency uh, will work with factories and uh, power plants, especially nuclear power plants, uh, to determine how much uh, byproducts they are releasing into the uh, environment. So uh, they will determine what's the safe amount to release into the environment as their byproduct uh, and work with those uh, different factories and um, power plants. Uh, the Department of Transportation oversees your shipment of toxic chemicals throughout the U.S. Uh, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, is actually the one that you will have the most contact with in your lifetime uh, because they regulate all workplaces. Uh, OSHA is the uh, group that puts together all of the videos you have to watch when you get hired someplace. Uh, videos like how to properly climb a ladder, how to properly pick up boxes without hurting your back, uh, how to maintain uh, safety when you have a um, bodily fluid spill. So somebody vomits in your workplace or somebody cuts themselves and is bleeding. Uh, the main thing for OSHA though is chemicals. So any chemical that you work with in your store or in your job, it uh, has to have a MSDS sheet somewhere in the store or in your job. Usually it'll be in the manager's office, they'll have them all, uh, or they will have them in a location where those chemicals are stored. Uh, and those sheets will tell you the potential health hazards that are involved with it. So if you get it on your skin, what you're supposed to do in order to uh, wash it off, or if you get it in your eyes, what do you have to do? So all of these agencies were instilled to help protect the public, um, and they actually have helped quite a bit. Uh, it helps protect us from um, bad things, if you will. That is it for this presentation. Thank you for listening and have a wonderful day.